Like a leech, they will latch onto your boat, eat, reproduce, and spread into clumps, clogging boat gears and poking people on shore once they dry up. For the first time, zebra mussels are in Lake Travis. KXAN's Phil Prason live along Lake Austin. He's there to explain what this means for our local lakes, the city operations along them, and the boaters who use them. Phil? Well, Robert and Shannon, this news is so important because Lake Travis is connected here to Lake Austin, and Lake Austin's connected to Lady Burke Lake down the way. It's all one system, and many of you will be out here for the 4th of July, and if you don't take precautions, you're going to spread them. We just don't want things to get out of control and find out that, oh, we could have done something about it earlier and we were too slow. People at Texas Parks and Wildlife tell me zebra mussel larvae have likely been here since May, but were just found last week. They will block pipes, make it very expensive for cleaning. They're originally from Eurasia, but they snuck onto boats and crossed the Atlantic Ocean and came to this country through the Great Lakes or through the Mississippi River. They showed up in Lake Texoma for the first time in 2009, and now they're here. Studies speculate it could cost a million dollars to retrofit a hydroelectric dam to defend against the mussels, but the Lower Colorado River Authority isn't worried about that yet. We'd prefer not to have them, but at the same time, it's not the end of the world for, for, for us in Colorado River Basin. The intakes for the Highland Lake dams will likely be spared because of the deep water. Zebra mussels can't survive the low oxygen levels below 25 feet. So we'll see more damage to boats, docks, ramps, and shallow water pipes, and there's no cost-effective way to kill them. So it's up to the many boaters on Lake Travis to clear them from their boats. It's literally the only way that we know to stop them from spreading. And I also reached out to Austin Water because their new treatment facility, Water Treatment Plant Number 4, gets your water from Lake Travis. And a spokesperson there tells me they have not seen any zebra mussels yet. They have filters on the intake pumps. They clean those pumps and inspect them every year. The next inspection is this fall. If they do find them, they have a machine that stops them from latching onto the intake pipeline. So again, most of the damage and most of the cost will go to boaters. Live at Lake Austin, Phil Prazen, KXAN News. And as Phil mentioned, zebra mussels were first detected in Texas back in 2009. Back then, they were only in Lake Texoma, but they have spread quickly, unfortunately. Right now, 10 Texas lakes are considered infested with zebra mussels. That means the population is reproducing rapidly. Five other lakes have multiple reports of people finding these zebra mussels. State lawmakers provided funding to help stop the spread of them. In 2013, the ledge approved more than a million dollars to combat all invasive species in Texas. Two years later, they raised that funding to more than $6 million. Texas Parks and Wildlife launched an awareness campaign, including pamphlets like this, to give boaters tips on ways to stop the spread. The campaign pounds three points home, clean, drain, and dry. Boaters are supposed to clean their boats after leaving a lake. They also have to drain out all of the water and dry the boat off before heading to another lake. It's not just a suggestion, it is the law. People who don't do this can face fines up to $500. Yeah.